Godan daginn, and welcome to the Iceland Food Center. Today we are going to learn how to make kleinur. You're going to need the following. Flour, sugar, butter, egg, baking powder, bicarbonate soda, kefir, vanilla, and frying oil of your choice. But hang on a moment, what is kefir? Kefir is a fermented milk drink not unlike buttermilk in flavor, but with a slight fizz. This will replace the Icelandic product surmjölk. You can find it really cheap in any Polish supermarket. Okay, what are we waiting for? You need half a kilo of all-purpose flour, 175 grams of granulated sugar, one teaspoon baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt for good luck, one teaspoon bicarbonate of soda, and mix these all together until well combined. Once it's all combined, it's time to take our fridge cold butter that's been cubed down, or if you like, you can cut them into squares or rectangles, but that's crazy talk. If you have a food processor, you can probably achieve the same effect by pulsing it on and off, but we're just gonna continue combining it with our hands until it forms a fine crumb. Something like this. Now that we're done with our forearm exercises, it's time to combine the wet ingredients. Starting with kefir and followed by an egg. Is egg a wet ingredient? I don't know, let's call it that. And next you need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Another thing you would add at this point is cardamom extract. That is optional as you can't really get that anywhere outside of Scandinavia. Next we beat this all together until it forms a proper cohesive mixture. The egg needs to be completely dissolved into it. And you can do it without causing a mess. But I think we all know that messy food tastes better. Now bring out your ordinary wooden spoon and create a little depression for all the wet materials. And then just dump them right in there. So take the wooden spoon and combine the ingredients until they all form a sort of a shaggy dough. It might take a moment but keep stirring and mixing and mixing and stirring. And once you reach a point where it looks a little bit something like this, it's time to get in there with your hands. Or if you have a table mixer, you can just stick it in there. However, I don't have any of those, so I'm gonna keep on kneading and kneading until it forms a cohesive ball of dough. It should feel slightly damp, but not so wet that it sticks to everything. Once that's combined, it's time to move on to a better surface. Something that can take proper kneading. It's a very kneady dough. Continue kneading it on a well-floured surface for about 5 to 10 minutes or until you have kneaded out all the lumps. Do be careful though of not over kneading it. If you activate the gluten structure, it might get chewy at the end. So it should look something like this. And now just let the dough rest at room temperature for about half an hour. Now traditionally you would use lamb tallow and coconut oil to deep fry cleaner, but we'll be alright just using vegetable oil or whatever you like. Now that the dough has rested for about a half an hour, it's time to roll it out and create some cleaner. It's gonna be quite springy and it's gonna be a little bit difficult to roll it out, but just keep at it. The end thickness should be around 5 millimeters. And the next step is to actually cut out the shapes. Traditionally, you're meant to use a pastry cutter, but only grandmothers have those, so I'm just gonna use a pizza cutter. Cut the dough into diamond shapes. I mean, you could probably use any shape, but diamond is a traditional one. And then make a little hole in the center. Now this is starting to resemble cleaner a little bit. But there's one more step. I mean, there's few, but yeah. To make the shape, you fold one end of the diamond under and through the hole. And then you learn how to focus your camera. If you have kids or any other sort of freeloaders, this would be a great time to have them earn their rent by folding some cleaner. Your frying oil should stay at around 180 degrees Celsius. Carefully lower in the cleaner and they should pop up very shortly. The best way to observe the temperature is with an instant read thermometer. This means you're on the right track. Now let's get the rest of his friends in there. Now you're looking to deep fry each side for about a minute or a minute and a half. But I prefer to go by color. When it's golden brown like this, it's just time to turn them over. And don't be shy with poking and prodding and turning them over if you want to double check the color. This is pretty forgiving dough. Once they've reached your desired golden color, it's time to transfer these beautiful cleaner onto a cooling rack lined with paper towels to catch the grease. Now please do try and let them cool a bit before you eat them. And the result? Absolutely beautiful bubbly interior with a crispy outside. This is what you get for leaving it the 30 minutes before. And that's cleaner, done deep fried and dusted. And now you can relax. 
enjoy your cleaner, dipped in milk or coffee, or just like me, straight up. Perfect. Perfect.